Let's talk about Taysom Hill, which you described to be a fake deal. Four years, $140 million from the way I read it and the way it's described to me is that they could cut him, void the contract after the second season with no dead cap. How do you view this contract? You're looking at a guy who was 3-1 and one as a starter, nine rushing touchdowns, four touchdowns thrown, only two interceptions. There was some success you guys had under him. Of How do you feel about Hill's contract? So – like I was mentioning, Taysom Hill's contract, four years, $140 million. I don't know all the specifics on it, but from what I've heard is it's voidable. Like you said, if the Saints want to cut him next year, they can definitely backpedal out of that. So I think Sean Payton was doing that. Obviously, it's going to – I have no idea what that just was. I just had something – geez, that was an awful sound in my ear. Um, you know, Sean Payton with the contract, I think he was putting that out – to kind of throw people off, you know, maybe get the media to bite on it, maybe to get people to think, oh, wow, he's really going to go in on Taysom Hill. You got guys here in Atlanta. You got guys on radio saying, oh, maybe maybe Taysom Hill is really showing something in camp to where he's going to for sure be the starter. And I do think Taysom Hill is possible, like is capable of doing that, but I don't realistically see it going down that way. So it is interesting with Taysom because with also signing Jameis, you got to wonder, is Jameis going to be – your $12 million a quarterback starter, it's probably an incentive. He's, you know, probably like a cam deal, probably getting paid about five or six, and the rest is based on playoffs, you know, accomplishments, things of that nature. And are you going to be paying a guy like Taysom Hill maybe more than receiver money, but less than quarterback money, if that makes sense, because you might want to put him in there? It's very interesting with the Saints, man. Personally, as a fan, I don't know. I was literally just saying 30 minutes before Drew announced it on Sunday that I thought Drew was coming back because he does it every year. And just something told me in the back of my mind, Drew is coming back. The Saints are surprising me. Trey Hendrickson is with the Bengals. Like, we're cleaning house, man. We're going in a lot of different directions, so I can't even begin to tell you what's going to happen. I just know I'm here for it, man. Absolutely, and talk about Jameis a little bit, and I'm glad you brought up that comparison. You talked about Drew Brees' first four seasons compared to Jameis Winston's first four seasons. Jameis, one-year deal, $12 million, as you described. Do you think he this quarterback competition is going to be heated and close because Jameis Winston, a, a lot of people believe he deserves to be a starter in this league. I'm 50-50 on it. Do you yeah. think it's going to be one of the tightest quarterback races? Or do you even think they'll bring in, potentially in the draft, another quarterback? Or is the starting quarterback in camp right now? The starting quarterback is definitely in camp right now, barring that the Saints make a move for Russell Wilson or Deshaun Watson, which I don't see happening at this point. Um, we're just doing our damnedest to get underneath the cap, you know, and make sure we're going to come back with some guys next year and just be able to have some money to potentially spend. But in terms of, um, dang, man, I totally just lost my train of thought. In terms of there being a quarterback battle, I definitely do think there is going to be a heated quarterback battle because Taysom Hill, he's now got four games under his belt. He, we don't know if he was wanting to be a starter for the Saints, but now that he's got that chance, I'm sure he loved it. I'm sure he was enjoying to, you know, to be able to actually drop back in the pocket and throw a pass. I'm sure he was enjoying leading the guys, being more than just a, hey, we need you here. Hey, we need you there. Hey, we need you there. Because that can kind of feel demanding a little tug and pull. You might grow, you know, grow a little resentment, not saying that that could happen, but that it's very, or that not saying that that was happening, but it's very possible. And now you remove him from that. Hey, we need you here, 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 that plug and play, play role. Now we need you to be the leader. Now we need you to be the captain. So I think Taysom, he's a competitor. He's a baller. He might be like, not even might be, he's one of the top athletes overall athletes, not players before anybody gets it twisted. He's one of the top athletes in the NFL. And it, the, the tape speaks for itself. Your eyes don't lie to you. We know what Taysom Hill can do. And then you have Jameis Winston, a guy who's coming off his last season was 30 interceptions, has been promised to start eventually by Sean Payton. The only time he really saw the field was to kneel it against the Bucks when Drew got hurt. And God's sake, we put him in the playoffs to, to run the play that the Bears did. I mean, the Saints literally put in another quarterback to throw the football down the field. So you know Jameis Winston definitely wants to get in there and he wants to play because – that's who he is. He's a you know former number one overall pick, Heisman winner, national champion. This guy still wants to play football. He was promised something by Sean Payton. So this quarterback battle is definitely going to be heated. And whoever comes out on top will have proved to Sean Payton that they're the one to be the guy. Absolutely, Adam. Look, I think Taysom Hill's favored to win the quarterback battle. I love but it. I do think that I do think that Jameis will overtake him just because of that. The the reasons why you got a guy a former. Number one overall pick. You got a guy who, considered in many people's eyes, is a bust. 
A lot of people view Jameis Winston as, as a bust. They thought yep. he would be all world. They thought he would be a Pro Bowler year in, year out, leading his team to the playoffs. So I think a lot of that is sitting in Jameis's mind. I think he's going to be motivated. I think he's le learned a lot from Drew Brees being his backup. I think that helped him mold as a player and mature as a player. So I think that Jameis Winston will be a tight battle, will be the starting quarterback. But I do think because of the success – whether people like it or not, whether people like how Taysom Hill throws that ball or not, because we know there's a bunch <laughs> of people who don't think he could throw consistently. He There was success there, and Sean Payton knows that. So I think in Sean Payton's mind right now, the favorite is Taysom Hill. But I do think Jameis Winston just being motivated, being a better passer, throwing a better deep ball, I think he changes some of his mechanics. I don't know if that laser eye surgery is going to help him with the turnover. Seriously, man, I, I, I'm I assuming it, you can't get any worse than 30 interceptions. Last time we seen him as a starter. So I, I do think that if they don't draft a quarterback, I, Jameis Winston will be the starter. But it'll be a tight race. I, I can't wait to see how that plays out, Adam. I think Very it'll be tight. a good race. And it, it's going to be crucial. It's going to be crucial because it's a Saints team that – People can say what they want to say. Oh, they should have been to more Super Bowls. They're expected to make the playoffs next year. You guys have a pretty good roster. I know you guys cut some guys, but you still have a pretty good roster. It, yep. Is your expectations, before we end it off, is your expectations playoffs, regardless of who's the quarterback next year? I can't honestly say, bro, because here's why. We lost, and there's going to be people out there claiming that, oh, these players aren't that big. You know, they weren't the playmakers on the Saints. But I promise everybody watching this video, you have not watched the New Orleans Saints like I have, especially the last four years in the NFL. Janoris Jenkins is gone. Trey Hendrickson is now at the Bengals. Malcolm Brown is out of there. Um, we lost Josh Hill. We, jo we lost Jared Cook. You know, we lost Emmanuel Sanders. Um, I mean, we lost some guys, man. Like we, we did a little bit of housekeeping because we had to, you know, we were over a hundred million in debt. We had the least amount of money in the NFL and we had to make up for it just to be able to go into next season and spend it. So honestly, man, it's going to be tough. I'll tell you this every year, the saints come out a little flat in the beginning of the season. They'll come out. The first game will be okay. We haven't started uh, two and oh in like the last four or five seasons, you know, Darren Waller cut us up with the Raiders the second game of the season this uh you know this past year um so the Saints have the talent to be a great team but when they come out flat and now they're not going to have that depth of talent that they had so many you know in in so many past seasons they're really going to have to be on top of things they're not going to be able to have these pass interference penalties and they're not going to be able to have these these offsides and these unsportsmanlike conducts that we sometimes like to get because now you're going to have less guys to fall back on now you're going to have to you're going to have less of a brotherhood behind you. You know, the, those guys are out the door. So now the people that are there, you know, Saints are going to look at some other players like, like PJ Williams, for example. I do not like PJ at all. We're looking at Richard Sherman. Bringing in a guy like Richard Sherman would make me feel a lot more confident than what we have in the secondary right now. And that's just, you know, one of the positions that I need think we need to address. At least if it's not for talent, please get some veteran leadership in there, you know. So saying the expectations for next year is tough because I, I really don't know what's still going to happen between now and week one.